we learned about the warrant the same time everybody else did on social media. And uh, we were able to speak to Cam because uh, he was actually in our building. And we found him. He was down with our strength staff. He kind of showed up unexpectedly to, to work out. Uh, we were able to talk to him in person, not me, but others, members of the staff. And uh, he left the building, and uh, we released him the next day, and no one has spoken to him since. You indicated that you urged him to seek counsel yeah. and to turn himself in. Did you get an indication of whether or not he was going to do that? Um, since I didn't talk to him firsthand, I don't know what he told the others, but um, that's what we advised him to do, and what he's done is kind of up to him at this point. There you have it. A little bit of an update on uh, the Cam Sutton situation. I know that some people had speculated um, he may have been bet. Uh, I'll just go out there and say it. It was something I was uncomfortable saying. But, yeah, we kind of figured in the modern day and era where, like, your, your, your phone tracks you, your car tracks you, cameras on both those devices, we thought he'd be able to find somebody. Mm -hmm. But it just turns out, no. He was literally in the building when the Detroit Lions find out about that warrant. Had a conversation with, I don't, remember, I don't know who it was. Obviously, it was a Rod Wood. But they advised him to turn himself in. And the following day, released him. And there's your update on Cam Sutton, really. I mean, I guess, good to know he's alive. But definitely still kind of weird he's evading everything. Yeah, it's, it's very strange. This is a very strange situation to be, you know, unfolding in front of our eyes. That What, what, what did he think was going to happen? Like you're just avoiding a warrant and not talking to the cops when you're in the midst of having them come after you and you're just going to show up to work like nothing was wrong, like no big deal, just be chilling in the in Allen Park. Like I don't understand his thought process. Obviously, he is not in the best mental state. Yeah. Where, but we hope he turns himself in and and everything is resolved in the situation and he gets the help he needs. But I I don't understand the thought process behind just oh I'll just show up to work even though I haven't responded to the cops in two weeks and there's a warrant out for my arrest <laughs> in Florida. I'll just go back to Michigan. Everything will be fine. Like they don't do background checks on that stuff. I, I don't, I don't get it. It's at least we know he's physically. Okay. Yes. That is the biggest thing. At least we know he's physically. Okay. Mentally. He, he's going to need some help. He, he needs somebody to talk to him. Like where this is what I look like. Who's in your corner, brother. Like you need, yeah. you need some better people in your corner to tell you hey. This is not how you go about doing this. I mean, I've had some friends go through episodes, man. I, uh, shout out to my guy, Kyle. But uh, we had gone down to New Orleans to work. We were doing the free phones. I told you guys the story beforehand. And uh, he was given, like, the, my, the Hawaii branch. And I like, we was super excited for him. Like, dude, you get to go live in Hawaii for a month and, and do what we're doing here right now. And uh, he disappeared. Like, we, we were leaving for Michigan. We, we, there was, like, two days beforehand. Uh, we didn't know where he was. We could have, like, sometimes you have those mental episodes. I mean, it's truly like, I mean, they just lose themselves, all grip, grip some reality, obviously. And this guy showed up to work like nothing happened. He was in the strength and conditioning room. I, I mean, that, I, I don't know. But, yeah, man, I hope, I hope he does get the help he needs. And that's very, very unfortunate because from the outside looking in, it felt like a guy that was a leader on this team, I, I guess, in terms of like he was like one of the – older gentleman in the, in the locker room, one of the guys who you've been through playoff experience with the Pittsburgh Steelers and whatnot, and that's also a storage franchise in itself. Obviously, Mike Tomlin, before that came out from Rod Wood, Mike Tomlin said that he called out and, and reached out to him. Wouldn't give any de details on that. It was a little bit, little bit of a, I think it was none of your business, classic Mike, Mike Tomlin response there, but he's alive. I just don't know if he's well. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's definitely not well. I can say that. If he just thought he was going to show up to work like nothing happened, there's, there's something going on there, and... I don't know where he's at now. I don't know if the Lions know where he's at now. No, I don't think that. I mean. But that's a situation that needs to be taken care of. Like, come on, man. What's going on here? You got to go do what's right. Do If you're so innocent, if you're innocent, if you, have, if you didn't do anything wrong, then go plead your case. Yeah. Go show them why. This is not helping you at all. Not at all. It makes everything look worse. Yeah. Everything looks worse at that point. I mean, it's – we all – kind of assumed that he did it just because of like, why do you run away from the cops at that point? Like, why not just go face it head on? I mean, Von Miller had a similar situation last year, if you guys remember. Mm -hmm. but he had turned himself in and got it taken care of. Actually ended up playing, like, I believe later on that season, if I'm not mistaken, last year. I, I could double check on that one. But I know that he was, he came back and returned to the team at the very least. Um, and, and to, I guess, satisfying Detroit Lions fans worried about the cornerback position, they are, they are looking. Uh, Reported they met and took out to dinner Maurice Norris Jr. I almost said Morris Norris. 
Either way, I looked in the sheet. Uh, Maurice Norris Jr., uh, defensive back. I think I believe I had my sheet here. He's six foot one, uh, 190 pounds. He went to Fresno State. Okay. He actually w- was trying to play basketball elsewhere. Walked on somewhere else, and then went to like a training camp for Fresno State. Walked on a team. That's that's a Dan Campbell guy for you right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, two interceptions, ten pass deflections, three and a half sacks, and just 13 games this past season for him. And they also met with. Now this name's actually kind of crazy. Nehemiah? Nehemiah? You want to try that one out? No. <laughs> N-E-H-E-M-I-A. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah Pritchett. Uh, another 6'1", 190 guy. I think, he, I don't remember where he went, actually. I don't know if they wrote that one down. No, he went to Auburn. I actually, no, I watched the tape on that guy. I liked him. Yeah. Um, he, this is a little bit of the takeaway I got, and I was at work when I was watching this tape, but he gets in the receiver's catch window. It's kind of aggressive at that point of attack. And I was watching highlights. I didn't watch any like, actual real game tape to mm-hmm. give you a takeaway on a full breakdown of him. But I guess in correspondence to like, the Cam Sutton news, they're very much active in meeting with cornerbacks. And it feels like they're going to draft a cornerback at some point in this draft. Yeah, no, they're definitely going to attack that position because it was a position I need going into this draft before you even got Cam, or before the Cam Sutton situation arose. And you got two of them. You got Carlton Davis, obviously, and you got Amik Robertson, who are going to be your starters going into next year. But – you still need depth pieces. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, those aren't guys that are, well, Carlton Davis, you don't know. He's been injured a lot. I'll just say that as it is. He's been, he's dealt with injury concerns throughout his entire career. So you'd like to have some pieces in the back end that you feel comfortable with stepping up in case of an injury. Nee, uh, Maya. Nee, Maya. This is Aaron Stoner. Maybe I'm looking like an idiot saying that. Uh, speaking of Meek, AP, uh, the owner of Meek, spoke about him too. He said the Detroit Lions got a competitor. Got a dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said he didn't want to be disrespectful about it, but he's got the little man's complex. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, get, that's, that's how he plays watching it. I, I, I think I concur, like, from the tape I watch. Uh, we obviously had uh, Coach DC from All 22 Films said the same exact thing. I think it just kind of reaffirms the points that we've made. Uh, and anybody that, I guess, wants to know what to expect out of Amik Robinson, who may have been concerned about him playing that CB2 spot. But I'm really, I'm really not. I mean, would I like some depth there? Yes, I would love some depth at every position. Detroit Lions are gathering depth at the position as we speak, yeah. whether it's going to be in free agency and or draft. But I, I think it's a guy that he's kind of yet to blossom. You know what I'm saying? Just because the, the, the time he's gotten there was from uh, what, Marcus Peters getting cut. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the, the game, or I'm sorry, the play that he, Marcus Peters had the pick six, is because of Meek was shutting shit down on the other side of the field and Jimmy G tried to force a throw. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised with the Meek Robbins. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident of it. And as you said, you put this beautifully last week. You have like your yin and yang where you got your, your big body guy in Carlton Davis. You want to put on the, the big receivers on the NFC North. Yeah. Then you got your speedster guy in Amik Robinson. That was a fucking perfect way to put it. That's exactly what we have right here. Yeah. And they're still cooking up. And by the way, Brian Branch going to have year two as well. Yeah, you got pieces. You got pieces. And like obviously, you know, Nehemiah Pritchett and Maurice Norris Jr., these guys aren't the superstars locked down all star no, corners you're bringing in like you know x was jackson flax and wax and like you're bringing <laughs> in these guys these guys are depth pieces if they sign again if you sign one of these guys you hope they'd never have to see the field so but you do need that depth that is definitely a position to need is, is some cornerback depth so i expect them to sign somebody before the draft to to fill that role and again, I, I know you're saying these guys aren't all stars and I, i'm not telling you they're all stars either but i'm not counting them out being that they're Brad Holmes prospects. But they're probably going to be pretty fucking good. And just, again, just a little bit that I watched. Just highlights, too. Not any tape. Silky Johnson said he's been talking about Pritchett for, since before for agency. Just so the highlights I put on the Auburn tape is against Alabama, too. It's not like a scrub of a school. Yeah. If he fucking fits the mold. I got to be honest with you. Just, just from what I've seen, he's a physical guy. Likes to get in the catch window of these other wide receivers. And just the, the story of Morris Norris going from freaking, yeah. you know, local college or, or Macomb Community College or freaking Fresno State and it's showing out. And the Detroit Lions weren't the only guy pursuing him, too. They just wanted to take him out to dinner and wanted to get to know him more. Yeah, and, baby, let me take you out to dinner. Take you out to dinner, baby. You think they do sign a free agent, though, before they go into the draft? So I saw – did we – someone put it in my fantasy group chat that Woodward posted something about Xavier Howard saying he'd, he'd, yeah, he'd be willing to come here, morning, but he's going to be cold or something he like that? He didn't say uh, – it says he's, cold up here. Yeah, he, somebody said something about Detroit, and he was like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's cold up there, but I can make it work. I need some video evidence of that. And he said no, he would, that was in the podcast. He said he would take less money to play for a contender. Ha, ha, ha. We, we, we. Detroit is contending. I'll take it. I would like more of a veteran-type piece, honestly, for this team. Um, I saw, I think it was 
Um, Jamie in the chat said, sign Gilmore and draft. That is what I'm down for. I don't want to go into round one without signing a veteran that's proven in this league going into next season. I think with the news of Cam Sutton, obviously thoughts and prayers to the victim, first of all. Hopefully she's okay with everything going on. And then hopefully Cam Sutton gets the help that he needs moving forward. Because yeah. it seems like he's in a really dark place right now. And hopefully everything just, you know hopefully we get a good comeback story like we were expecting on the field this year for Cam Sutton but obviously that's not going to be taking place anymore I would like to go with the veteran route I don't know how you guys feel about that before the draft but that is personally I think would be the best move so we don't have to take a corner maybe first round or second round and we can still go BPA here for Brad yeah I think I think you do the mixture of both and I, th I think that you have that available to you all day I'm not sure if, if Brad does it only because we do have the Meek Robinson who could, you know, jump into two free right away. But I'm, I'm with you. Like, like give, me, give me the combination of the two. If a guy like Xavier Howard has gone, you know, publicly and said, I'm willing to take less and, uh, and he's willing to come to Detroit specifically, yeah, grab him as your veteran piece and have him compete in camp. I mean, that's what you guys like to do, right? They, they love competition. Bring the three of them, a Meek, Xavier, and the rookie. Yeah. And, I, and if the one thing I want to point out about the rookie, we know Brad does BPA. It feels like the research he's doing on these cornerbacks is they feel like guys are going to be further in the draft versus the guys like higher up in the draft. I'm kind of cooling down my, my Kool-Aid for Kool-Aid. Yeah. Literally, just because it feels like he might go a little bit sooner than we expected. And the guys that Brad's meeting with are guys that aren't day one guys. They're all mm -hmm. like day two dudes, you know? Yeah, these are guys that he would have obviously taken the time to speak with them if he knew the Camp Sutton situation before the draft, but he didn't. So he met up with them after, but they're not, like you said, they're not date one. These are round three plus guys. Yeah. So we'll see. I see going down that way. Uh, Aaron Stoner, Xavier, that's still too much for Jeff. Dude's a bum. He'll be in the CFL in two years. What? What is he talking about? Xavier, that's still too much for Jeff. Okuda, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Not too familiar. Or I don't know what he's trying to say. But no, I think you bring in Xavier Howard. At least somebody who can. Who's had the experience? I think you signed, I think you signed somebody before the draft. Because, yeah, obviously, Nehemiah Pickett. Marcus Lawrence, Norris, Chestnut, like <laughs> that'd be like those are nice pieces that you hear later in the draft. But I'd rather have a, a veteran to either battle with Amik for that CB two position or yeah. be that guy that in case someone goes down, you have confidence that okay, he's played in the NFL before, he knows what he's doing. You put him out there rather than a rookie that you're going to get in the third or fourth round. Yeah, I mean, and another piece of it too, to be honest with you. We, we talked about it when we were arguing about the Legereus Seed two weeks ago or a week ago, however long it was. But, like, beyond depth, I think you also just want multiple guys that can play the position because I feel like that's how teams are attacking you on offense nowadays. Like, there's multiple, like, wide receiver ones or, or guys that like of that caliber. And I, I just think you got to be ready for it. I mean, especially in our division. Look at the Chicago Bears mm -hmm. beefing themselves up. And we, we have to see what they do in the draft. They can still at number nine, grab Rome Madunze or whoever ends up falling there. I mean, we've been talking – about Brian Thomas Jr. and gassing ourselves up about that possibility, they could make that happen. Mm -hmm. And to have uh, three people like that. So, like, give me, beyond depth, just give me three guys that can go out there and, and expect to play ball. And I thought about it today randomly, and I didn't want to get it out. Like, I forget which rookie I was talking about, or someone was interviewing a guy, who, you know, rookie year last year. And it's the same question. Like, oh, what's the biggest adjustment to the game? Oh, you know, speed, speed of the game, speed of the game. Like, look how fucking, sorry for swearing, but look how dope Brian Branch was year one. Yeah. And now he's going to have that adjustment to the speed. Mm -hmm. He was already like a, a, you know, he had a, a knack for getting to the ball or having a nose, you know, where it's at and making a play on it. Year two of that is going to be even better. So sign me up, man. And, and Detroit Lions grab as many corners as you want. I ain't tripping on it at all. I agree.